Hey Krishna, welcome to Iskon Perth's official YouTube channel. Today we have with us His Grace Prashant Mukund Prabhuji, who is from uh, Iskon Dwarka. He is a, one of our very dedicated disciples of His Holiness Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, and we are very very fortunate that he kindly accepted our invitation to come to Perth and deliver seven days of Bhagavad Katha, which will be starting from 19th of September. And till 25th of September. So, welcome Prabhuji. Thank you so much uh, Rasikanand Prabhuji for giving me such a warm welcome here in Australia, Perth. I was in anxiety before coming to Australia, how the community will be, but I am amazed to see so loving devotees are here, such a nice developed community among leadership of you people. Thank you so much. Yes, Iskon Perth is a very, very loving, very, very friendly congregation. Even I had the very similar experience when I came to Perth first time. Right. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, we'll begin with something about yourself. If you can please tell us something about yourself. Um, I, I come from India. Uh, my Basically, my natives uh, are from Vrindavan, Mathura. We are the Brahmins, Chaturvedi Brahmins from Mathura. So, I have an old roots. I have seen my grandmother reading the scriptures and... Uh, worshipping the deities of Radha Krishna. But I never took it seriously. Mm -hmm. It was just a rituals of seeing and doing it. And later on, I did my graduation in chemistry, industrial chemistry. Then I did my post-graduation in management from Pune Symbiosis. Later on, I went to London for my diploma in pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. And I worked for uh, pharma companies in research field for many years. And also, I was having a tinge of hobby as an actor. So I oh, worked for okay. uh, many uh, documentary films, many TV serials, just as a hobby. And that was an extra income, you can say, or, a, or an extra time utilization. Instead of going to clubs or uh, dance clubs or partying out, I utilized that time for uh, my hobby pursuing into media field. Right. So I worked for many years. Later on, when I get Bhagavad Gita of Srila Prabhupada in year 2002, so I started reading it. And uh, in year 2006, I got a book called Second Chance. Then it was decided that Krishna is calling me and I had dedicated my life for preaching into Krishna consciousness. Since 2006, I'm engaged. And later on, by the mercy of my Guru Maharaj, uh, Param Pujya Gopal Krishna Goswami Maharaj, I came to Krishna consciousness full time and I left my corporate career, media career. And now I'm utilizing that media talent in promoting uh, Krishna Conscious through the social media, media channels and uh, by the mercy of spiritual master Srila Prabhupada, founder Acharya of ISKCON, I have more than 10 million people watching my videos on different, more than 85 YouTube channels and many television channels. Mm. Yes, Prabhuji is a very uh, famous YouTuber. He has so many, as Prabhuji said, so many videos. So I guess... Because you have a background in media, <laughs> this is like a, a very natural for you to, you know, be on in front of camera. Yes. And, uh, so I thought of utilizing that talent, which I have utilizing for the material purpose. Why should not you for the preaching the scriptures written by Srila Prabhupada day and night? So I thought of preaching and the result of that, that even the Australian people have watched and they have invited me here. Yes, very <laughs> nice. That's a great example to use our talent in Krishna consciousness. Very nice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, so, can you tell us something about your involvement in Iskon Dwarka? Iskon Dwarka is in New Delhi. It's, uh, there, there are more than 18 temples in Delhi and CR. So, India, the capital of India is Delhi. So, in the capital city, Srila Prabhupada wanted more than 17 temples. So, he gave this responsibility to my, my spiritual master, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Musayi Maharaj. And Maharaj did that. He entered into the eternal pastimes in 2024, May. And before that, he like inaugurated more than 18 temples and many, many small centers. We have many Namata centers, many bases. Uh, so, Skon Dwarka is one of the biggest temple coming in the range of those 18 temples. It's a 150 crore Indian rupee project. It's a very wow. big project. And uh, it's almost done. So, I am looking after the preaching fundraising, deity worshipping 
and mostly the media communications the social media again the same thing so i check everything what goes on the media or the print media or the social media that uh, whatever is going should be philosophically as per the krishna consciousness what shil prabhupada taught so as uh, last 20 years i am reading the scriptures of shil prabhupada and when very depth uh, so that responsibility given by my maharaj and my authority to check each and everything which is going out that it should not deviate from the path what Srila Prabhupada taught. So they have designated me as a senior counsellor and an international spiritual guide of ISKCON. So mm -hmm. I am doing the service. Very nice. So I know that you are uh, very, very well versed in scriptures. You have I'm trying to, I'm a student of scriptures, but yes, I'm trying for last many years. So I share my experiences. Yeah, so uh, it'll be nice if you can tell us how you study and how do you take notes and how do you find the inspiration to read Srila Prabhupada's books and preach? The inspiration is Srila Prabhupada himself because Srila Prabhupada um, created a gap which was, was which was between the Sanskrit scriptures, the Vedic scriptures and the English language. So Srila Prabhupada created that bridge that old ancient scriptures reaches to the community which is in English language nowadays. So the English people uh, sometimes plan that there should be a gap, but that gap was covered by Srila Prabhupada by giving the ancient scriptures in the English language. Mm -hmm. And that's why we people, those who were studied in the convent schools, we could also get inspiration that, oh, our ancient knowledge in the English language. And then when I read scriptures, I found Prabhupada said, read scrutinizingly. So that this word scrutinizingly, I, I thought number of times, what does this mean? So when I discuss with many senior devotees, they said scrutinizingly means we should not read books. We should study books. So there is a difference between two words, read and study. Mm -hmm. So we read novels, we read newspapers, mm -hmm. but we, have, we study school books. Mm -hmm. We study college books. Similarly, like school and college study, we have to study the uh, our scriptures, marking it with a pencil, making the notes. And Srila Prabhupada used more than... 28 Puranas and the other scriptures, other commentaries to give us the conclusion of all the Shastras and scriptures in one go. If somebody reads Srila Prabhupada book, he is touching more than 28 other Vedic scriptures. Hmm. Isha Upanishad, Kato Upanishad, Padma Puran, Skanda Puran uh, and the commentary of Vishnu Chakri Thakur, Sridhar, Sridhar Swami. Prabhupada have read all this. Hmm. So that inspires me yeah. that uh, Prabhupada said, this is sincere students if they have completed my books, then after reading Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitan Chaitamit, they can enter into the different scriptures. But before that, you should not. So I read all the Prabhupada scriptures two times completely. When I became well versed, I gave many classes. Then my seniors, uh, sannyasis and uh, devotees said, now you can enter. So on the authority, I entered into scriptures and now I'm relishing Srila Jiva Goswami, Srila Vishnu Chikri Thakur and other Acharyas. Okay, I have some questions on that, but we'll come that come to that later. <laughs> okay. So, so now we'll move on to some of the general questions that uh, I have, and on behalf of our congregation, I would like to ask. Sure. You can please enlighten us. That will be. I will next. try to serve you people who are very small, insignificant. Thank you so much. So one of the thing is, um, devotees are often confused of you know whom to take initiation from. Mm -hmm. One is in general whether within is con or outside ISKCON. Yeah. And the second part of my question is, within ISKCON also, because we have so many initiating gurus, mm. which is not a bad thing. It's great fortune. We have so many initiating gurus. Right. But for newcomers, sometimes it becomes really difficult to choose to choose and whom should they take shelter from. Right. Right. So actually, um, as per the scripture says, Chatavari Sampradayini, there are four Sampradaya in which you can take initiations. One is a Shri Sampradaya, which is uh, being taken into this age of Kweral Kalyuga by Shri Ramanuja Acharya. Mm -hmm. So they have their belongings in the South India community and, and other areas of the world. Then second comes the, the uh, this uh, Nimbarka Acharya. They, they, uh, they followed this Kumar Sampradaya. So they have their belongings in um, Rajasthan. And from Rajasthan, they are expanding into different parts of India. And they have uh, many, you have heard of Nimbarki 
Nimbar ki sadhus. So they come from Kumar Sampradaya, Chatus Kumar. Mm -hmm. And then comes uh, Rudra Sampradaya, which has diluted their their like uh, stature in in the uh, India. But it's been started by Vishnu Swami, but now it's not available. It's been carried forward by Vallabhacharya and now it's known as Pushti Mahal. So that comes in Rudra Sampradaya. And uh, we people in Iskon, we follow Brahma Madhav Goddess Sampradaya. I mean the lineage coming from Brahma, the creator of the universe, then to the Madhavacharya. And later on Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu started this mission, which is called as Gaudiya mission. Mm -hmm. So among all these four, they are authorized Sampradaya. But because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was taken shelter, the being a God himself, Krishna himself, he took the shelter into this Sampradaya. He said, this is one of the best Sampradayas. I am not saying that other Sampradaya are bad, but the maximum realizations, maximum preaching work is going on in the Sampradaya. Others are doing, but not, not everybody is doing. Few people are doing in those Sampradaya. But in this Madhav Gaudiya Sampradaya, the many, many sadhus are doing the preaching work and, and bringing people to the knowledge of God. So, one should take the shelter into this Sampradaya. Now, from this Sampradaya also, there are many tributaries which is called as Up Sampradaya. Mm -hmm. So, like in the age of Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur, he was a district magistrate. And in the British's time, he was exalted district magistrate and the president of the ancient Jagannath Puri temple in India. Mm -hmm. So, being such a high level standard, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur said at that time, a time will come when there will be many up sampradayas, means the tributaries from the mainstream. So some some sampradayas like Karta Sampradaya, Karta Baul Sampradaya, Baul Sampradaya, Karta Bhaja Sampradaya, uh, Sahajiya Sampradaya, Sakhi Bekhi Sampradaya, Nityananda Vansh Sampradaya. So there are so many sampradaya. They some people may be right, but maximum are on the prakrit level that they imitate the highest level of Krishna consciousness. Hmm. So sometimes people get deviated thinking, listening them that, oh, they are very exalted sadhus, but they are not actually exalted. They are imitating to be an exalted sadhus. Hmm. So how do we test? Hmm. So like that there is a, some symbols on the dollar note to check is it a real dollar or it's a fancy or a fake rupee note. Hmm. So there are some guidelines given in the banking system. So similarly, for the sadhus, there are some guidelines given in scriptures. So the guidelines are like there is a shlok in Srimad Bhagavatam, Titikshvaha Karunika, Suhradam Sarvadehinam, Ajat Shatrava Shanta, Sada Sadhu Sadhu Bhushanam. So it says that these six symptoms should appear in a sadhu. Titikshva means tolerant. Karunika, very compassionate. Titashva Karunika Surdam, very loving to all the living entities. Ajat Shatra, there should be no enemy. Sadhva, he should be a sadhak. He should wake up early morning. He should chant the rounds. He should give the real mantra which is given in the scriptures. He should not create his own hmm. way of um, like reaching God. Hmm. He can reach, might be because of his meditations or japas, but he is creating a wrong influence on the people living in the entire world that if I have got God through this way, you can also God. No, we can't imitate anyone. We have to follow the the, the, the sampradaya or the succession which is scripturally based. Hmm. So this is how we should take shelter in sampradaya like ISKCON organization, which is coming from a sampradaya called Brahma Madhav Gauriya. And in this sampradaya, there are many gurus, hmm. the, the devotees of Srila Prabhupada. Hmm. And, and now the third generation is coming Prabhupada disciples, disciples are becoming sannyasis and mm -hmm. initiating gurus. So we should respect all, but uh, we should follow one. Mm -hmm. And how to choose? There is a course called ISKCON's Disciple Course. That course is created by the governing body commission of ISKCON. The, uh, the organization said that we can choose by hearing and reading about from that person. Mm -hmm. So if you, after hearing, feels there is a there is a connection between me and that person. He is resolving all my queries because every human being has a different mindset. Mm -hmm. So you have to find someone who is matching your mindset. Right. And if that person matches your mindset, then you can take shelter. And if he is available to solve your queries, you cannot make a YouTube gurus. Mm -hmm. So because he is not available to talk, he is not uh, like uh, available to uh, reach out, then, then you should take inspiration 
but you should not make him a guru. Guru is one from whom you can write a letter, email, text, and you can find a replies. Yeah. We need a living gurus. Mm -hmm. So we can't have a photograph of a guru and say, I have accepted him as a spiritual master. Yeah. So sometimes, like I preach on YouTube, people take my printouts mm. and say, he's my guru. Mm. So I mm. say that I'm not a guru. Mm. I'm just a student of ISKCON, all the gurus. I'm a very small person. Mm. But for those people, because they have realized the Krishna consciousness through me, so they think I'm their guru. So I can be a, a, a teacher for them, a counselor for them, a guide for them, mentor for them, or can be an instructing guru for them, but cannot be a, a the Diksha guru. Cannot be a, a what do you call initiating yes, guru. Yes, yes. So if you initiating guru you need, you need to be authorized gurus of ISKCON and whom with you can make a connection. Hmm. So so in terms of selecting the guru, the suggestion is to hear from that particular uh, a lot of hearing guru. should be done at least for one, two years. One or two years. Years mm -hmm. and you can relish as yes, this person uh -huh. actually changing my life. Mm -hmm. Also, we see that sometimes some some initiating gurus are very uh, lenient and they want to give initiation immediately whereas some they want very to strict. you know as i say boil the milk yeah um, so sometimes that also creates confusion amongst <laughs> newcomers that oh i don't want to take from this particular maharaj because it, it depends on time, it so. depend, depends on person to person mm. like for <clears throat> like there is a many scriptures available in three modes of material nature mm -hmm. those people are in mode of ignorance they will go to Lord Shiva because Lord Shiva will del deliver those people, those who are in mode of ignorance. Mm -hmm. But Lord Shiva will deliver means that that person will reach up to the next level of worshipping Krishna. Mm -hmm. So Lord Shiva is not a, not in mode of ignorance, but he has taken responsibility of delivering. Similarly, Brahma has taken responsibility of delivering people, those in mode of goodness. Mm -hmm. And Vishnu has taken responsibility of delivering people in mode of goodness. So there are different gods also available mm -hmm. under the shelter of the prime god Krishna mm -hmm. to deliver different category of different moods of people. Mm -hmm. Similarly, in Iskon also under the category of shelter of Srila Prabhupada, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta, Iskon's founder Acharya, there are different gurus with the different modes of people they are delivering. So if, if your mood is that I can't read so much, I can't do so much, I just need to surrender to this person because he is easily giving initiation, you can go, mm. he is good for, for you. Mm. But if you want more deep scriptures, you need more understanding, mm. you want to surrender, then you choose that kind of a guru mm. who is deep in scriptures, who is really yeah. uh, doing that. So they are different, like somebody has a mood of making temple, somebody has a mood of kirtan, somebody is moving mood of a bhagavatam. So choose guru as per your mood yeah. and that mood matches with your guru. So whoever inspires you the inspires most. Inspires you, you the most in that Thank service. you very much, Prabhuji, for that wonderful answer. The next question I have is, you know, uh, children of devotees, yeah. they are introduced to Krishna consciousness. They are given Krishna conscious philosophy right from the childhood. Yeah. But when they become teenagers <laughs> or when they uh, start studying in universities, they somehow feel that I've had enough. No. And, and they deviate to the material world. Yeah, and they uh, vanish from temples. <laughs> they, they, they don't come to the temples. They have uh, lost interest mm. or, or they sometimes feel that I, I need to experience the other world as, as well, the material world. Um, but as leaders of congregation sometimes feel that these are the future leaders. Yeah, obviously, yes. But if they are not interested and they are not really taking the teachings of Srila Prabhupada to the seriousness that is expected, uh, what suggestion do you have for such what I feel, and how, how we can bring them back? Yeah, I feel Prabhuji that uh, few children like from the womb, when they were in the womb of their mother, from that very beginning their parents were devotees. Mm -hmm. So for them, it's very easy to continue in Krishna consciousness. But their devotees, those who are already married before coming to Krishna consciousness, they have children like at the age of 6 or 10 or 8, and later on they become Krishna consciousness. So when they, they come to a devotional life, they try that their, their children should also come. So their children at, from the 10 to 16, they come. But when they become 16 years and plus, then they start arguing that you people have enjoyed your life mm. and now you want us to restrict from eating out this, this and that. Yes. So this is one problem that how to bring those children. And if the parents or the couples, those who are still not married or they are planning to marry or planning to beget a children. So they should 
plan a way that they should follow the rules very rigorously and when their children will watch them because parents are the role model of their their children so the parents if behave in a very devotional way children automatically follows so people those their, their children are later on they join krishna consciousness and uh, then now children have vanishing they, in the early ages they were very participating but now they are not participating and so for them the congregation should need to move into an advanced level mm. we can't give them an um, the older old way of connecting into krishna consciousness mm -hmm. by uh, giving them bhagavatam classes or something we need to go on social media mm -hmm. now people are following instagrams facebooks yeah. so f if they are watching the material world through those mediums we can uh, put our material of krishna consciousness on those mediums so that here and there they will watch it yeah. and we have to make some uh, fun loving classes for the younger generations yeah. for the kids we have gopal fun schools and such schools but for people those are above 16 there is no such schools mm -hmm. either we have youth forums for the people those are above 18 or 20 yeah. we have gopal fun school till 15 years of age but from 15 to 20 we don't have any yeah. any anything so this is the crucial time of a life we are person is into puberty teenage is completing you now entering into the mature stage of life mm -hmm. so we need a support system kind of thing that a, a, a devotee family whose children are already in krishna consciousness they are coming to temple you should ask them to give classes to such children and go for a picnic go for a outings mm -hmm. and their campings mm -hmm. and there they do kirtans and they make instagram reels they should make documentary movies and they should study the culture through the social media way they should not has to be read bhagavad gita every time so we can create bhagavad gita documentaries by enacting and utilizing the way 15 to 20 years of kids mm -hmm. so they will get an engagement they can be utilized as a a cooking um, uh, competition is there mm -hmm. who will cook best for other any of krishna they will be engaged a fence dress competition who will the miss scon part or mr scon part mm -hmm. with the best vedic way yeah. and who can be the best scon speaker I am going to ask one best female speaker. Yeah. So there, there should be competition of speeches among the such children. So they like to debate on Mayavad philosophies and such philosophy. Mm -hmm. So we can give one party a Mayavad philosophy, one party Krishna philosophy. Mm -hmm. Read and then debate. Yeah. So this will inspire devotees to go and peep inside our ancient scriptures. Mm -hmm. So sometimes with all these YouTube channels and YouTube videos and Instagram, sometimes the person's focus is so much into creating videos and you know being nice on camera the devotional aspect may be diluted um, mm -hmm. how do we inspire people to on one side create nice videos educational videos but at the same time not compromise on the devotional aspect as well uh, like making videos and uh, going on youtube for for service so it's it's, it's also one of the service mm. somebody is chanting and also cooking in the temple somebody is chanting and also building the temple somebody is chanting and also distributing the books mm -hmm. somebody is chanting hearing reading and and going for a fundraising somebody is uh, chanting reading hearing and also going for spreading the shrimad bhagavat or the the preaching work so there are so many services we are doing so why people ask question on this service only mm -hmm. this service should be taken in a service mode mm -hmm. by doing your sadhana very properly in the morning and wherever you get time because when you have to present uh, some video you will go more deep in scriptures so go deep into scriptures not with the thought of becoming a a star or a hero of a youtube should go in the scriptures that we should promote this knowledge as much as we can like shila prabhupad used the dictaphone at the time when nobody was using right. prabhupad utilized in the in the four months of chaturmas to travel from india to many places prabhupad says we have to leave the old style of the saintly things and we have to utilize all the material things for the pleasure of krishna so we should think this internet is also a part of krishna's energies and utilize the service of krishna it's a service mm -hmm. and with the service mode we have to read more and create more good content yeah. the reason why i ask this question is many of the uh, traditional devotees sometimes feel that it, it, it's all glamorized and it's all very uh, you know you want to become popular and all that but as you said everything can be used in krishna service it's yukta vairagya principle yes. and similarly being on camera like yourself 
They do so many YouTube videos and benefiting so many people around the world. Uh, this is also part of service to. And always maintain man. your humble attitude that this is what this is service. I'm giving. If somebody creates a big temple of cross of project, mm. will he take a ego in that that I created it? If he is taking that, he can be a deviated person. Right. So similarly, like at that time and in those services, somebody maintains a, a book, great book distributor and can can have an ego of distributing so many books. So. And ego can come here also. So ego can come in any way. So the way the other devotees maintains their uh, humble attitude by doing some menial services. When you are on camera, create good content. But when you are not on camera, the meat devotees very humbly serve very menially lower services, yeah. broomstick services, sadam distance services. Mm. Embrace devotees humbly. Do not think that you are a star. You are just a. a Representative of Shri Prabhupada's mission. Mm -hmm. So you you are a representative. You are not a not. You are, I'm not giving my content. I'm giving Shri Prabhupada's content in in the advanced way on the language which people of now can understand. Thank you very much. <laughs> so um, you have been traveling around the world. You have been to many places: America, London, Dubai, and now Australia. What is your view? How do you see cultural differences between uh, among the youngsters? Specifically, in uh, in terms of Krishna consciousness in India and in Australia, I and if you have any suggestions how we can improve, I think culture difference is that people in India they have a consciousness that we belongs to India. This Vedic culture belongs to us, mm. but people here in other countries, the West or the East, uh, it's like that. When we come to the such countries like Australia. I have seen the devotees here are hungry, thirsty for getting the spiritual knowledge. Mm. So um, the children here are very innocent, and uh, they are actually taking Krishna consciousness, whatever ways they know, very seriously, doing kirtans, chantings. But the devotee children or the people there in India, they are relaxed that we will take it up because it's our our product. Mm. We can take it anyways. Mm. So culturally. People are more welcoming in the other countries, mm. but in India, that they think it is our mind, so they don't take it very seriously. Mm. So the people always misses the train whose home is near the railway station. Mm. People yeah. misses the plane who those who live near the airports. Mm. Similarly, we live near the airport of Pekunta, mm. so we misses the Pekunta airlines. <laughs> but we have seen people like you here, those are thirsty and hungry, and you are much better than us. <laughs> you are just trying your best to become as sincere as possible. So it's good, uh, so good. I find that the cultural difference actually. Also, in terms of preaching, uh, there is uh, the preaching results. I mean, in, the, in terms of you know getting new comers to join Krishna consciousness in a serious way, is far more successful in India uh, that's as, true. as compared to Western world, you know, America and Australia. Actually, I, I heard one devotee was sharing. That in India, when we read a verse called Dukhalayam Ashashudham, so Dukhalayam means a place of misery. Alayam means a place like Shivale is a place of Lord Shiva. Madhiralla is a place of alcohol. Vidhyale is a place of education. So Dukhale is a place of dukha miseries. So the India is very easily we can feel this. It's Dukhalayam, the very lot of traffic, mm -hmm. people in a bad state. Roads are not proper, so they accept very easily and they come to Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. But when we come to such places where Australia, a big space is here, less population, and people have all the good opulences here. Mm -hmm. So when we talk that Dukhalayam, we don't feel Dukhalayam. It says yeah. Dukhalayam for you, not for me. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it's very difficult to make them first understand that this place of misery. Mm -hmm. Like when Shila Prabhupada went to London, and uh, Prabhupada was explaining about Narakaloka. So the devotees in London asked Shri Prabhupada, Swami ji, uh, you are talking about Narka, hellish planets. What kind of hellish planets? Well, have you seen hell? How it looks like? Shri Prabhupada said, just like London. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so it's an hellish planet because uh, some days before I've seen that in a park we were chanting mm -hmm. and uh, and there were people, those who are behind dogs and holding the, uh, the um, rope of their dogs. And uh, they are, they are, uh, the dogs are doing the stool, passing stools, and the owners are catching it up. And they are having holding the stool of a dog, and we are holding the japa mala. So, such a difference 
in, in India, like it's it's not like that. Yeah. So uh, this is Dukhalayam. If somebody is carrying a stool in the hand, yeah. what can be a more miserable place than this? But still, this is need to be make understood to those people. Hmm. This is Dukhalayam. Yeah. Huh? So the owner is dog, or the owner is the owner not able to understand. The dog is passing a stool, and owner is standing and watching it out. Okay, you do it. I am waiting. But when when the owner is passing stool in his bathroom. The dog is not waiting for him. So, who is the master? So, that needs to be understood. <laughs> yeah. Even Srila Prabhupada said, if you don't worship G-O-D, you will have to worship D-O-G. <laughs> D-O-G. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so uh, I completely agree. Uh, it is Dukhalayam yes. and uh, it's Dukhalayam everywhere in yeah. the entire universe. Uh, it's just the difference of miseries. miseries. In India, the, the there's difficulties of poverty and other Small. stuff. Whereas here, People have big houses, but yeah. they are lonely. lonely. There is mental issues, yes. mental problems. So, so just we need to address. Yeah, if exactly. we address that issues with them, they will share their heart. Yeah. In in just three four days, I am traveling here. I have met few people, and they are crying. They have tears in their eyes, and they want to join. Hmm. But because I am not a localite here, so I will ask devotees here to continue with those people distributing Gita and connect them because they need support. But we are not approaching them with that mindset. Hmm. We think that. We, we are only cultivating the Indian people here. Mm-hmm. We need not to touch those people. But we need to touch each and every living entity. Why Correct. to think about that? We have to talk only about the Indian community here. Correct. Correct. And Srila Prabhupada also wanted that this Krishna consciousness should be spread yes. across everyone, yes. all the foreigners yes. and all. Yes. So you mentioned about Narka Loka, which uh, reminded me of <laughs> your very famous 10 million views <laughs> YouTube video. Um, this video was on death and what yeah. happens to the soul after death and right. what is Radha and uh, Pindadan and all that. So, we will have an elaborate video on this later. Right. But if you can just tell us something about this and uh, you know how a soul travels and what are Radha, Pindadan and Pitra Lokas and all this. Like uh, when somebody passes away, so the body uh, stays there. But the, the soul, the owner, like in a car, if car met with an accident, so the car damaged, but the driver does not damage. The driver is safe by the airbags nowadays with the technology. Mm-hmm. Similarly, there is an air inside our body, which is called as Panch Pranavayu, Udan, Apan, Vyan. So that airbags are there inside. So with, even with the damage of the body in accident or a natural death or a diseaseful death, the soul with the airbags gets saved. Mm-hmm. And the soul is a driver of this this body called the car. Or the ex- so when the driver is out, the so driver looks for that my car is damaged. I need a new car. So similarly, that's that driver needs another car. So the soul, which is never damaged, so needs to travel before it gets the new car. So in material world, we need to have a new car. We either call the emergency cab number or some helpline numbers. So similarly, that soul also calls and wants to get a new body. So the time which we take from changing one car, damaged car to the another car, the same time has been taken by the soul from one body to the next body. So that is the video which you are talking about. I have created in Hindi language, which is life after death. There's a series of that video mm-hmm. and it has changed and one crore people. It's more, more than millions of people around the world from Hong Kong, India, and uh, Japan, uh, what to talk about the, this uh, America, Europe, and every day, Houston, Philadelphia, Denver. I get so many emails and mails and messages. Everybody is interested to know that everybody knows about how to live this life. Even the animals know how to live and enjoy. But what happens to us after mm-hmm. after that? So, so that I have taken references from many scriptures like uh, Garun Puran, Srimad Bhagavatam, lectures of Srila Prabhupada. Hari Bhakti Vilas, other Purana, and have combined and have speak, uh, spoken that thing. That when soul passes away, it takes 13 days to soul from getting out of that area. So mm-hmm. the body is lying down, body is criminated through bur- burying or by on the fire pyre, whatever ways. The soul is standing out and waiting for 13 days there. Then the Yamdutas, those who belong to the hellish planets, they are the messenger of the hellish planets or the guards. They come and they hold uh, that soul and drags to the uh, judgmental day. Bible also says that there is a judgment day. And even Quran says that uh, those that 
and Jannat. Hmm? Mm-hmm. And the Bible says the hell and the heaven. And our scripture says Swarga and Narka. So in all these scriptures, Christianity, Islam, or Hinduism, Sanatani, or the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, everywhere they are the dependence on the what how we lived our life, karmas. So that soul given us a, a transparent body which is called as a Ativahakshari. Ativahak means it's, it, it is an air wire medium, it's a transparent body, you can't see, but it is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, like you have seen a movie called uh, Hollow Man. So man is there, but it's a hollow. You can't see, but he's doing all the activities. So all over the world, people have seen that Hollywood movie Hollow Man. In India, famous Mr. India. He is there, but he's doing activity, but can't see. Mm-hmm. Similarly, the soul is there doing activities, but we can't see. So that soul, after 13 days, by the Yamdutas, dragged to the judgmental day. And there are 16 stations comes in between. I have explained all those 16 stations that you have to stop on all the stations. Uh-huh. So those stations comes in every month. Here, one month and there is like, there comes 16 stations. So on every month of the passing of a soul, the descendants has to offer some food as a Shraddha karma to their parents. Shraddha means faithful offerings to their ancestors. The first 16 months. First, first 11 months because their speed is faster. Uh-huh. So those 16, 16 days, 16 stations covers in 20, 20 days. So okay. 11 months is called as annual ceremony. Uh-huh. So after the annual ceremony is done, now we ex- expect that right, the soul has reached to the judgmental day. And from the judgmental day, there are four gates, hmm? south uh-huh. gate, north gate, east and west gate. Uh-huh. So if somebody has done a lot of sins, then we will send to the hmm, southern gate, which is a uh, hellish planets. And then there is a body called Yatana Shari, a body of punishment has been given. In that body, the soul will only feel the pain, but nothing will happen to the body. Like if somebody slaps us here, mm-hmm. we will feel pain. But if you, if somebody slaps in the hellish planet, then it will pain like a, uh, the uh, lightning sounds coming from the clouds mm-hmm. and it falls on somebody. Mm-hmm. That kind of a pain is there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Multiplied pain, exponential pain. So pain is extreme, but the, the body is un, undamaged. Undamaged. It remains like that because it is a punish, punishmental body. Yep. Yatana Shari. Right. So you will got all the punishments, but no, no, no blood on the body. Nothing happens. Mm-hmm. But pain is inside because the mm-hmm. soul is having that feelings. Mm-hmm. Body does not have feelings. That is the body is put on fire. Does not feel. Till the time soul is there, even the matchsticks creates problems. So all the feelings, emotions, not of the body, they're of the soul. Mm-hmm. So that soul feels so much of pain and similarly if somebody has done a lot of good karma, pious activities will go to the different gate and reach to the Swarga planet. Swarga is a, a planet which is heaven and there no fever comes to the body. It's called as Deva Sharir, mm-hmm. a demigod body, mm-hmm. a Deva Sharir. In that Deva Sharir, you will not have a sweat. No smell, no perfumes required. Mm-hmm. Lot of swimming pools with the scented perfumes. Mm-hmm. Many good women all around. Everybody is having their flying planes. Mm-hmm. So after doing pious karma, you reach to that. If somebody has done equally pious and equally sinful karmas, actions, he will get a humanly body. Mm-hmm. If he has done more sinful actions, he will get again on the earthly planet, a animal body. Mm-hmm. Recently, today we went to the wildlife and we've seen so many wildlife animals. Mm-hmm. So, somebody who is so sinful can take a birth in an animal life. Mm-hmm. And somebody who's done a lot of pious activities, still, after the pious activities finished or the training has been done, for enjoying those pious karmas, come back again to the earthly planet. Mm-hmm. So, the hell and heaven are the training centers. Mm-hmm. And if somebody is very spiritual in his life, mm-hmm. will enter to the topmost northern gate. And will go to the Vaikuntha planets. From there, there is no returning back. Mm-hmm. And he will get a body called a divine body, Sachidananda body, mm-hmm. which is unbreakable like the soul. Uh, so, so these are the three gates, uh, four gates. And from the fourth gate, there is a called a waiting station. If the decision is not made on that time, mm-hmm. sometimes like you go to hospital and there's no doctor available. So they ask you to wait mm-hmm. for the operation date, 20 days, 30 days. So people say we come from far, we can't go back to Australia, mm-hmm. we come to India for an operation. It's okay. If you wait, wait, there is a waiting waiting Room. rooms or guest houses there. You have to pay for this. So they go and settle down in the Pitra Loka. Pitra Loka is a waiting station 
सो द किंग ऑफ दैलिश प्लैनेट इज यमराज द किंग ऑफ द स्वर्ग लोक हेवन प्लैनेट इज इंद्रा एंड द किंग ऑफ द पित्र लोक इज आयरम who rides on crows and that's when in india we have a custom uh-huh. to feed to the crows for the ancestors yeah. because the crows on the crows our ancestors comes to this earthly planets and take food in the pitrapaksha so what is pitrapaksha like our one year is equal to the one day of the swarga uh, pitraloka so in pitraloka there is lunch time once in a day so in our one year there is one one only 15 days are called as pitrapak this is the lunch time of the waiting ancestors uh-huh. so they have not reached to any destinations mm. so when we offer food to them through the cows through the crows through the brahmanas or vaishnavas that food reaches to that ancestor somebody sometimes ask if ancestor has already taken a body in heaven or hell mm. how do we know he is there waiting or not mm. so even if you are ancestors not waiting has taken a body in different planets still your food will transfer like i come from india i have carrying rupees with me but when i came to australia it converted into the australian dollars mm-hmm. and if i am in requirement of some more money if i ask india people give me some money they will put in bank indian rupee when i will take it out it is australian awesome. dollar so similarly when we put food into the mouth of a cow it is grain food uh, a food mm-hmm. which human eat mm-hmm. but if our ancestors in a heavenly planet it will convert into the the heavenly amrit nectar and that that ancestor will take the nectar on that day mm. a glass of a nectar yeah. if somebody has reached to the hellish planet will get that kind of a food mm-hmm. if somebody has reached to the animal body and we are offering food then the animal takes like grass it will convert into the grass mm. if somebody takes non vegetarian animal that food will convert into so that the animal remains satisfied mm. and somebody have reached to the spiritual world mm. then it will convert into the prasadam of krishna but every ancestor will get the offerings okay. it is never damaged so this misconception that people have that you know my ancestors died so many years ago now i don't need to continue no, this is actually absolutely wrong. wrong we need to yep. offer at least for the two generations to my father to mm. my grandfather we need to do after that you can skip but for a child at least two generations mm. is a it's a, a regular prescribed duty and it's given in shrimad bhagavatam 7th canto by lord narsingha to prahlad mm. that prahlad the prahlad asked what about my father who is killed by you then prahlad the narsingha lord narsingha said you need to follow all the prescribed duties of doing the shraddha karma for your father mm-hmm. so these are the shraddha karma which is to be done by shraddha mm. faith it's not a uh, Not doing ritual, not taking very, very care of the mm. parents. Yeah. And what about the pinda dan? And the pindas are the uh, some the balls made at the time of death with some sesame seeds, black sesame, and uh, covering with the uh, flour, the atta, the flour, and making the balls mm. like we make it for making chapatis. Mm. And that balls kept on the death body. and the in the 10 days of the purification after the death in the 10 days you have to offer 10 pindas on the name of that the person passed away yeah. and those 10 pindas will give the 10 gates on the body if you give, go and read shrimad bhagavatam third canto in that kapil bhagwan lord kapil is explaining to devuti mata his mother lord is saying that when the child come into the womb the first pinda mix in the first month second pinda creates the third pinda creates this. so the pind dan given by the descendants reaches the ancestor for taking the next body so so mm. uh, and the body which which we talk just now the ativahak the body for traveling from this planet to the judgmental day the 11 months for that also we need a body so that body was also taken by the pind dan mm. so there are lot of intricacies in mm. that Thank you so much, Prabhuji. I know this is a very elaborate topic. Yeah. Uh, as I said, we will have a separate video on all this, and we will have definite, specific questions on this because I know this is a very popular topic, and as we know, ten million views <laughs> in Hindi. So it will be very nice to have this in English. Yeah. So once again, thank you very much, Prabhuji, for coming to Perth, yeah. giving us your association, thank and you. also for this uh, video. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, Rasika Nandu, for welcoming me in Scone Perth. and i will try that uh, if shila prabhu pa desire i keep coming here 
Yes, definitely. We'll keep inviting you. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.